Hokey dokey. In this video, we are going to knock out WebAssign 1.2. Let's get started. Number one, evaluate the expression. So we want to cube negative 2. So that means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Three negatives multiplied together give us a negative. Three twos multiplied together give us eight. So negative eight is our answer. Um, if it helps, a negative raised to an odd power is always going to be negative. And, uh, you know, if you have a negative, say it was negative 2 to the fourth power, like an even power, that would result in a positive number, and that number would be 16. All right, number 2. <clears throat> they say value the expression. Again, we have a negative now to an even exponent, a 2. So this answer should be positive. So then we'll just square 2 and we'll square 7. So we'll make sure to get 4 over 49 and call it a date. Number 3. This one, we are cubing a negative number, but then we're also negating that. So cubing a negative number should result in a negative, but then negating that should make it positive. So in the end, we could just get... I'll do it still piece by piece, but 4 cubed would give us 64. 5 cubed is 125, so negative 4 fifths cubed is still a negative 64 over 125, but then again, we're negating that, so we want a positive 64 over 125. Number 4, evaluating this, we have this negative term squared, so it's going to be positive, so 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. And then we have a negative cubed, so it will be negative. 3 cubed is 27, and 4 cubed is 64. And then we could probably simplify this. Let's see. We could simplify it like this. We could do 27 divided by 9 is 3. 4 divided by 64 you can divide both by 4 and get 1 over 16. If we multiply across now, we have a negative... We, we have a 1 times negative 3, so that's negative 3. And we just have basically a 1 times 16 on the bottom. So I'm thinking negative 3 over 16 for this one. Number 5. Evaluate this expression. So negative 2 squared is just a positive 4. Negative 2 cubed is a negative 8. Multiply those together, you get negative 32. Number 6. Evaluate this expression. So we're dealing with negative 3x cubed. That's negative 3x times negative 3x times negative 3x. We know negative 3 cubed is negative 27. x times x times x is x cubed. So we get this for the first part. Negative 3x squared would be <clears throat> just negative 3 squared, so that's 9. And then x squared, which is x squared. And then multiplying 27 times 9 gives us something. Uh, 81 I think that's 243 so I'm going negative 27 times 9 is negative 243 x cubed times x squared is x to the fifth make sure to add those exponents number seven perform the indicated operations and simplify so the idea here is to subtract the term so we could jump like this we could do negative 5x minus 4x and get negative 9x or if you prefer you can like rewrite it all and drop the parentheses right you could go negative 5x plus 3 minus 4x and negative times negative 5 would be plus 5 so if you prefer you can write that out then simplify so negative 5x minus 4x is negative 9x 3 plus 5 is 8 um, but either way you know sort of gets you there <clears throat> number eight same deal here I might try the route of just not distributing or not dropping the... I mean, in this case, since you're adding these two, you could just drop the parentheses and uh, leave it exactly the same. So just like terms here, we have a 6x squared minus 2x squared. That's 4x squared. We have 8xy minus 6xy. That's 2xy. We have a 2y and no other y term, so that's plus 2y. And then we have a plus 2. So that's all we can do there. Number nine, we can do 2x squared minus negative x squared. So that's 2x squared plus x squared. That's 3x squared. So we've taken, we've taken care of those. 
Now, negative 6x minus 2x. That's negative 8x. Taking care of those. 4 minus negative 6. That's 4 plus 6. That's 10. And that's it. <clears throat> Number 10. Perform the operations and simplify. Pardon me. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. So the idea here is we want to just multiply the numbers. Th negative 3 times 4 times 4. That would be negative 12 times 4. So negative 48. Perfect. Now we can just focus on the R terms and the S terms. So let's ignore these for a sec. R terms, we have R times R squared, and that's it. So R cubed. Again, we add their exponents, 1 plus 2. Let's get rid of the R terms. Focus on the S terms. We have S squared times S squared times S. 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5. So we have S to the fifth, and that's it. Number 11, all we're doing here is distributing the xy, 8y times, uh, sorry, xy times 8y, 8's going to come out in front, there's only one x, but there's y times y, so you have y squared. Now, xy times minus 7x, we have minus 7, we have x times x, that's x squared, and then just the single y, and that's all we can do. Get rid of that. There we go. And keep in mind the order does not matter with multiplication. It's commutative, so you can have, you know, y x squared or x squared y. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Number 12. We want to distribute this negative 3x and distribute this 4x, and then we'll simplify. So we'll do this stuff first. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. x times x squared is x cubed. Negative 3 times 3 is minus 9. x times x, x squared. Negative 3x times negative 5 is plus 15x. 4x times x squared is 4x cubed. 4x times minus 3 is minus 12x. Like terms, minus 12 plus 4, that's negative 8 x cubed. No other x squared term, so just minus 9x squared, and then 15 minus 12 is plus 3x. That should do it. Number 13. <clears throat> we are distributing. So we get 10a minus 5b. Distribute the minus 2, you get minus 2b plus 4a. Any like terms here, we have 10 plus 4 is 14a. Negative 5 minus 2, that's minus 7b. Number 14, we are distributing the 3r and distributing the minus 1. We get 9r squared. We get 12r, we get minus 3r, we get minus 4. Combine the middle terms, you get 12 minus 3, which is 9r. Pardon the sign. All right, number 15, same deal here, 3m times 3m, 9m squared, 3m times 4n is plus 12mn minus 3 times, so negative 3n times 3m is minus 9nm or mn, interchangeable, and then minus 3n times 4n is minus 12n squared. Altogether, we have 9m squared, 12 minus 9, keep in mind mn and nm Either one are like terms. So 12 minus 9 is 3. Mn minus 12n squared. Number 16. 3m, 2m squared, that's 6m cubed. 3m, 3n, 9mn. Minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. N squared 
m squared minus 2n squared times 3n is minus 6 n squared times n is n cubed and I don't think any of these are like terms so we would just leave it like that 6m cubed 9mn da 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 keep in mind this order doesn't matter as long as they're multiplied together <clears throat> number 17 more distributing let's start with the 4m squared to these three terms so we will get 4 times 2 is 8 m squared m squared is m to the fourth 4m squared times 4m so 4 times 4 is 16 m squared times m is m cubed 4 times minus 5 is minus 20 and then we leave the m squared let's do the minus 1 to all three of these we will get minus 2m squared minus 4m and plus 5. Now, 8m to the 4th is its own deal. No other like terms for the m cubed. There is a minus 20 and a minus 2m squared, so minus 22 m squared minus 4m plus 5. So lots of terms there. This doesn't want to erase. There we go. So we have 8m to the 4th, 16m cubed minus 22m squared minus 4m plus 5. That was number 17. Here's number 18. Woo! Here we go. All right. Uh, okay. So we want to square this out. So I'm going to keep negative 4 on the outskirts of everything for the time being. Let's square out x plus 3y squared. It's very important to remember, whenever you have any binomial, any two-termed expression squared, you want to square it like this. You want to treat it as that. You don't just want to call this x squared plus 9y squared because that's not all the terms. So I'm going to teach you a trick. If you don't already know it, it's the first term squared. So x squared. I'm talking about this here. So first term is x. First term squared is x squared plus first term times second term times 2. x times 3y. That's 3xy times 2. That's 6xy. And then last term squared is 9y squared. That's what we get if we would have foiled this out because it would have been x squared, 3xy, 3xy, 9y squared. So it's, you know, doing it quickly. Now, minus, we'll do the same thing here. Squaring that out, we get first term squared, so 4x times 4x is 16x squared. We get first term times second term, that's negative 12xy times 2, so negative 24xy. And then minus 3y squared is plus 9y squared. Make sure to keep all that in parentheses because you're eventually going to subtract those. And then we have this stuff multiplied out. Um, it, eventually, you'll know that it's like something minus something and something plus something is a difference of two squares. So eventually, we'll know to jump right to just this here. But we'll, we'll multiply it out for the time being. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times y is 2xy minus y times 2x is minus 2xy so that's why those cancel and then negative y times y is minus y squared so basically these two terms are out of here we just have minus y squared on the end so i think that's everything now let's combine some like terms within the parentheses here we have x squared minus 16x squared plus 4x squared you ready so negative 15x squared plus 4x squared that's negative 11x squared let's ignore those now focus on any xy terms 6xy minus negative 24xy that's 6xy plus 24xy that's 30xy and that's it so ignore those now 9y squared minus 9y squared those are out of here but then there's still a minus y squared there. So tack on minus y squared. All of that is times negative 4. Let's do it. 
44x squared minus 120xy plus 4y squared. That was a good one. 44 minus 120 looks good to me. All right, number 19. A manufacturer of tennis rackets finds the total cost to be this expression here. Each racket can be sold at a price of P dollars. So this is the price. Find an expression giving the daily profit, P. Assuming that all of them can be sold, hint the revenue is given by the total number of rackets sold multiplied by the price of each racket. So let's start there. Revenue, they are telling us, is price times quantity. Quantity multiplied by price. So typically, I would write it as P times X, price times quantity. That's essentially what they're telling us. So we're going to take that P expression, which is right here, and just multiply it by X. So basically just distribute an X to all these price terms here. So if you want, we can expand it out here first. So this is P times X. So that's why the revenue is going to equal negative 0 0.0004 X squared plus 9X. So that's our revenue. <clears throat> and then they tell us profit is given by revenue minus cost. So we have our revenue, and up here we have our cost. So we're going to take our revenue and subtract our cost. So let's write it out big time here. Profit is going to be revenue, which is what we just found. In parentheses, minus in parentheses, the cost. This is what this whole homework has been leading us up to, being able to construct the profit function. So let me double check all my values here. I think we're good. Okay. So now, like terms, x squared minus that x squared. Think about it as negative 4 minus 3, so basically negative 7, but with all the zeros. So negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7 x squared we have 9x minus 2x that's plus 7x and then just a minus 500 and that my friends is the profit that is revenue minus cost that's all there is to it number 20 jake owns two gas stations projected revenue of the first gas station is this so that's revenue one okay okay so projected revenue of the second gas station is this they say find an expression that gives the amount by which the revenue of the second gas station will exceed that of the first gas station so i believe we are simply doing r2 minus r1 how much will revenue two exceed revenue one so 0.9t squared plus 250t. We can do it vertically if you prefer, if you want to give this a practice run. Minus R1, so 0.6t squared plus 200t. So we are just subtracting vertically. 0.9 minus 0.6, that's 0.3t squared. 250 minus 200 is 50. So I think that's it. That is the expression that represents how by how much the revenue of the second gas station will exceed that of the first. And that's all there is to it. I believe that's all homework. If you have any questions, please let me know. As they say, bye.